Tonight, Apple lets Health Kit apps back into the App Store. More trouble for ride sharing companies. They know who they are. And why this new social network, Ello, is being called the anti Facebook. Tech News Tonight is next. This, this is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 181 for Friday, September 26, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Citrix ShareFile. Enhance your workflow, send files of almost any size easily and securely with Citrix ShareFile. Try ShareFile today for a 30-day free trial. Go to sharefile.com, click the microphone, and enter TN2. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, reporting live from my home office, where you might see a cat or two. But uh, let's get right into the tech feed, shall we? Google may start putting pressure on its partners to put its own apps and services at the forefront of most Android phones. Amir Efradi of The Information says that he's obtained confidential documents that show Google wants its partners to place more of its apps on Android phones and feature them in more prominent places. Now, part of this is to increase consistency in the Android experience across devices, but may spell trouble for a company like Samsung, which offers its own TouchWiz software to its Android devices. As part of the updated contract, Google is also requiring at least one of its partners to increase the number of Google-made apps from 9 in 2011 to 20 in 2014. And manufacturers may not have much of a choice here because Android currently holds an overwhelming 85% of the global smartphone market. That's as of July 2014, according to Strategy Analytics. After an iOS 8 health kit flaw forced Apple to pull third-party health kit apps from the App Store, the company is finally letting them back in. One of the first apps to show up is called Fitport, which acts as a replacement dashboard for health information. All the data is getting synced back into the health database on iOS. HealthKit apps were originally supposed to return to the store with iOS 8.0.1, but if you're unlucky enough to have <laughs> installed that, you know that it disabled many users' cellular and Touch ID access, if you're an iPhone 6 user anyway. Apple then had to pull that update about an hour and a half into pushing it out after it was released. Now that 8.0.2 is out, went out last night, Apple appears ready, finally, to give App Store customers access to HealthKit. But what a mess that was, according to Apple. Less than 40,000 iPhone 6 and 6 Plus devices were affected by the iOS 8.0.1 bugs. Must have been just all of my Twitter friends. All the tech people are, are, are in those 40,000. But the company did issue an apology alongside the release of iOS 8.0.2 for those affected. Yesterday on TN2, our guest, Steve Gibson, also the host of Security Now, explained a little bit about how the exploit shell shock works and that it's quite a big deal. It accesses a Unix command shell and language, including in a lot of different device operating systems, including Apple's OS X. Apple now says it's aware of the exploit and is working quickly to provide a software update. However, the company tells iMore that, quote, the vast majority of iOS 10 users are not at risk to recently reported bash vulnerabilities. With OS 10, systems are safe by default and not exposed to remote exploits of bash unless users configure advanced Unix services. So if you have, you probably already know who you are. However, Shellshock is still a big deal because it reportedly affects most Unix and Linux-based operating systems that's globally around the world, making millions of computers and embedded devices vulnerable and required to be updated as soon as possible. We got some sort of good news coming out of BlackBerry. BlackBerry CEO John Chen has announced that the company has taken 200,000 orders of its new Passport handset since its launch on Wednesday. Chen says the Passport sold out in six hours on its own website and in 10 hours on Amazon. AT&T has also confirmed it will sell the Passport, but as of yet hasn't provided a price or date of availability. The smartphone's unlocked version is going for $599 in the U.S., so, you know, it's, it's, it's undercutting the iPhones and the Samsung Galaxies. BlackBerry provided an initial small order, which obviously contributed to selling out quickly, although Chen says a larger order will come in next Wednesday. BlackBerry also reported a smaller quarterly loss today than recent quarters, which could point to the company turning things around. BlackBerry reported a net loss of 207 
million dollars or 39 cents per share for the second quarter that ended August 30th, which is smaller than compared with a year earlier loss of 965 million or $1.84 per share. It's still a loss, but analysts were expecting worse. More legal trouble for rideshare companies, Uber and Lyft and Sidecar. All three companies received letters from the San Francisco and Los Angeles district attorneys in California, claiming that they're operating illegally and need to make major changes. The two district attorney offices conducted a joint investigation into the companies and found that a number of practices say that they violate California law and represent, quote, a continuing threat to consumers and the public. Specifically, Uber, Lyft, and Sidecar are all accused of misleading customers by falsely claiming their background checks of drivers screen out anybody who has committed a variety of criminal offenses. The district attorneys also told the three companies that their new shared ride service fares are calculated in a way that violates state law. The companies have been asked to re respond to the letters by next Monday and meet with representatives of the district attorney's office by October 8th. If not, the prosecutors are prepared to file legal actions seeking injunctive relief and civil penalties. Earlier today, Reuters reported that Yahoo is exploring a strategic combination partnership with AOL. And a lot of people said, what in the heck is that all about? It appears that the root of this story stems from a letter from Yahoo activist investor Jeffrey Smith of Starboard, and they have a lot of Yahoo shares, to Yahoo CEO Marissa Meyer, and urging her to combine Yahoo's business with AOL's. He also has a lot of other demands. He wants her to sell Yahoo stakes in Alibaba and Yahoo Japan, cut costs by $250 million to $500 million per year, and stop acquiring startups that don't add to revenues. According to the letter published by Business Insider, Smith thinks that the combined companies could cut $1 billion worth of costs. Coming up, where it is now legal to make cell phone calls on airplanes. Yes, it is legal in certain places. And up next, I will chat with Jordan Novet from VentureBeat about Ello. If you haven't heard of it, it's a new social network that's ad-free and getting a lot of attention. But first, we want to take a moment to thank Citric Sharefile for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. All right, so you're, you're in a business. Maybe it's a huge business. Maybe it's just three of you. In any case, you've got to share files with 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 your contractors and 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 your and your employees and 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 your colleagues. Most businesses have to rely on email for this. You've got documents and spreadsheets and PowerPoints and and people have to sign contracts and you got to look at photos. All of that stuff becomes a headache when you work with traditional email. You've got file size restrictions. People are on you know different different email servers. You get bounce backs. There's now, more than ever, the threat of security breaches. That's why Citrix Sharefile is really, really important and can help your business because it sends your attachments as secure links. You can send files of pretty much any size, huge files. And then it has the highest degree of security so you feel better sharing, especially when you've got coworkers that might be remote, might be another country, might be out of town, and you still have to be sending sometimes very sensitive information back and forth. You can receive notifications knowing who has downloaded your file and when, time stamped. Uh, Citrix Sharefile is really easy to integrate into any business, depending on what business you have. You can certainly use it and you can access your files from anywhere. So it's really perfect for a modern business when you've got employees that are on the go. They're on their laptops or, or tablets or smartphones. They are on the go. Sharefile is highly recommended by us at Twit. And if you're not using Sharefile yet, you can sign up for a free trial right now. Put away your credit card. You don't need it. You can see why millions of professionals rely on Sharefile every day. Free trial right now. Get started today. Go to sharefile.com. There's a microphone right at the top of the homepage. You go ahead and click on that. And then you enter the code TN2. That's TN and the number two. That's sharefile.com. Type in TN2 for that 30-day free trial. And thanks to Sharefile and our friends at Citrix for sponsoring this episode of Tech News Tonight. Joining us now is Jordan Novet, staff writer over at VentureBeat. Welcome back to the show, Jordan. Hey, Sarah. How's it going? It's going really well. Uh, I'm really glad cool. that you agreed to talk about Ello with me today because Ello has, be has been getting quite a bit of attention. And I, and I need to know if you agree with me 
on why mm -hmm. LO is a, is a is a social network that's mm -hmm. kind of being talked about as the anti Facebook. Why do you think that such a comparison has been made by two networks that don't really resemble each other much? Okay, so it is a social network, and people are hyping it uh, this week as if it's going to be the next thing that you need to get an invitation to, so you can be on it too. Um, the comparisons might just end there um, because uh, this startup um, is saying that it doesn't want to use ads, um, unlike other social networks that you can think of off the top of your head. Um, and it's not going to sell data on what people do with uh, Elo to other people to make money. So I think that is where the anti-Facebook uh, label is coming from. So I think there's a, a lot of you know, interesting aspects of it in terms of uh, design too. But I, I think that is less about the anti-Facebook label than just the, the decision not to use ads, at least based on what they're saying now. You know, Jordan, before the show started, you and I were kind of joking about the fact that I was I was feeling angry that some other Sarah Lane uh, got the Sarah Lane username. It's usually, I'm usually the first Sarah Lane uh, to ever get those. But it does, I think, uh, uh, point to how how popular this social network uh, has gotten over the last week and how much interest it has drummed up. However, at least on Chrome, which is my desktop browser of choice, it really doesn't work very well. You really can't search for people. It seems like a lot of the functionality is broken. Are you huh. finding the same issues? Because to me, it feels like Elo is a little half-baked. It might be feeling that way because it's kind of clunky right now, but you have to say... Um, that they aren't the kind of company that is going after, um, well, how can I say it? Uh, they're not Facebook. <laughs> and so they uh, don't have a lot of experience operating at scale. And this week, um, their signups have gone through the roof. Um, so I think some things, some features might not work. Um, that might be, uh, uh, I'm not sure who's to blame on that, but it. Um, is still in the process of getting features. There's a long list of features that are coming, um, like messaging that, that's not there, and user blocking, private accounts. Um, there are things that you know, people think of in a social network that aren't quite there yet. Um, and so, th so there's technical things and there's business things that, that cause me to totally agree with you that it's like not quite the, the social network you know, perfect perfection that we would expect. One of the things that strikes me about this is Okay, we've got this social network. Uh, it doesn't want to be like Facebook and that it doesn't want to collect your data or, or, or make money off of advertising. Okay, that's right. all fine and good. But it doesn't really seem to work that well and it's not really offering much of a solution, at least not you know, in its initial week of, 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 of being sort of in the public domain. Mm -hmm. What does this say really about the social networks that we've all grown accustomed to? I, you know, is is the world and 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 all of us who rely on these networks to communicate with each other, are we experiencing kind of that next shift, that post Facebook wave, where we all want something different so badly that we're leaning on to 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 a network that hasn't even really proven itself yet? Well, I think we all want to see the next big social network. Um, we know Twitter well. Um, we know Pinterest. We know Google Plus, or we try to ignore Google Plus, uh, and we. <laughs> Some of us uh, are still addicted to yeah, Facebook, sure. but we, we want to see something new. Um, and, and so what, what appealed to me about this is, is that it is, it, it is stripped down um, and that it is um, not filled with uh, ads, actually. Uh, and we, we might want to just um, have an experience where we're not inundated by a lot of noise that we've accumulated out over after using these social networks for years, like you know, more than 1,000 people um, or media outlets, you know, throwing things into our feeds. This is very kind of quiet and toned down. And it is a nice contrast from, from Facebook. Um, I'm actually having a lot of fun, you know, poking around, uh, coming across the feeds of different people who I never met before. Um, but basically, there, there is really a problem at Discovery where if you don't use the, the Discover feature um, and just click on someone at random, you're not necessarily going to come across something that's high quality. Uh, you have to know who to look for, basically. And I think if the LO people are smart and, and they seem to be in terms of design um, and software development, um, that'll evolve. I'm, I'm oh, looking forward to it. Um, you know, uh, you, you mentioned uh, sort of quiet and under the radar. Uh, LO is getting um, some 
criticism uh, from some people who say, well, they took venture capital. So often when a company takes someone else's money, they are beholden to the venture capitalist uh, to make sure that they give them their money back. If they're not selling ads and they're not collecting data and selling that data to another third party company, how can the company expect to make money? Are we looking at a pay for social network in the future? It might be that there will be a freemium business model. Um, and by that, I mean, people will still be able to use it for free. And if you want cool features, uh, special features, you'll pay up. Um, and that is how a lot of uh, cloud startups, you know, I, I write about that stuff, um, do mm -hmm. just fine uh, or survive anyway, um, you know, when they have a lot of venture capital. I think I'm actually looking forward to seeing how cool. this group of artists and designers, um, because that's what re they really are, um, uh, is going to take a totally different route and, and surprise everyone. Like, yes, they do have venture capital, but it's not a huge amount yet. Um, I think $425,000, which is not a big amount at all. Um, so maybe they're just going to go and say, yes, we do have venture capital, but uh, we're going to take our sweet time. I, I think Pinterest uh, great, um, has proven a great example of not monetizing quickly. Um, and people still use that you know, quite a lot. Uh, they have a nice office uh, with, with lots of venture capital money, um, but they don't have like a lot of ads right now. Um, that'll change, I think, but it's been slow for them to implement. I think uh, Elo might be also, you know, slow to, you know, come up with these crazy targeted ads. I don't think Google double-click ads are going to be popping up anytime soon in Elo. And I'm well, happy it about very, it. <laughs> it's certainly very interesting that so so many of us seem to be clamoring to find the next big thing. We're we're just mm -hmm. the next alternative. And uh, Jordan, if people want to connect with you on Elo, which is Elo.co, E L L O. <laughs> .co for anybody who hasn't signed up yet. What's your username? Um, my username is just my first and last name, uh, Jordan Novet, J-O-R-D-A-N-N-O-V-E-T, just like on Twitter. Jordan Novet is a staff writer over at VentureBeat. Of course, you can read his work at VentureBeat.com. And, and uh, well, you already plugged your own Twitter name, Jordan Novet, on Twitter as well. That I did. Thanks for being with us on TN2 this Friday afternoon, and have a great weekend, Jordan. You too, Sarah. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Thanks. See you later. Come back soon. All right, finally, we mentioned some people are going to be able to start making phone calls on airplanes. So if you're a frequent flyer, this might be good news, this might be bad news, depending on how quiet and peaceful you like your flight. The European Aviation Safety Agency, or the EASA, has issued new guidance to European airlines allowing passengers to keep their phones and other portable electronic devices switched on throughout flights, regardless of whether or not the devices are in airplane mode. Each carrier still has to go through an assessment process to make sure that aircraft aren't affected by transmissions coming from the devices of passengers. But under EASA's new policy, airline crews still have the authority to tell passengers to switch devices off. That's going to be interesting once passengers know that they don't have to be. And of course, then there's the issue of passengers flying at 35,000 feet. I don't know if you've ever accidentally left something on at 35,000 feet, but you're not going to be connected to a cell tower on the ground. So airlines will have to provide in-flight telecom services if they so desire. Oh, we're going to get talking people on airplanes. It's a pretty much a done deal, everybody. And that is it with some pretty good news for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Appreciate everybody who has already. Write us at TN2 at twit.tv with questions, comments, or feedback. And don't miss Tech News Today next Monday, 10 a.m., 1 p.m. Eastern, and every weekday. Tech News Today in the morning. Tech News Tonight in the afternoon. We got you covered. I'm Sarah Lane, and thanks for watching. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.